How's it going everybody? My name is Warner Fields with Fields of Profit. I'm a high six figure full time Amazon seller and in today's video we're going to be jumping into one of my favorite ways to find products for my online arbitrage business. This is going to be a very beginner friendly method. We're going to be using two tools. Cost you about 40 bucks a month to get set up with this method but it's an insanely powerful method. Very very affordable too and it's not just great for beginners right? So we're going to be looking into that as though you've never found products before but this is also an awesome strategy that I still use almost every day to find products for my own arbitrage business. So many different ways out there but I want to go ahead and break this method down. Down for you guys if you guys haven't already checked it out there's gonna be a link right down below for our completely free Amazon seller discord server recently hit about 17,000 members in there with a whole bunch of free information would love to see you inside there but let's go ahead and jump into the video So the method we're going to be using to find some products today is called reverse sourcing or storefront stocking. I know a lot of you guys might have heard of it before, but using these two tools together makes it a very powerful way to source products. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just go to a product listing where there's probably going to be other online arbitrage sellers. Basically, we're going to be looking through the products that those other online arbitrage sellers are selling because reasonably they wouldn't be selling those products if they weren't making a little bit of money off those. So we need to start by finding a product that is being sold by online arbitrage sellers, right? You can't go to a product that's private label. It's being sold by one seller you're not going to learn anything from that you can't go to a product that's selling super fast super cheap it's got a bunch of wholesale sellers on there because that's not our competition so one brand that I like to start from is great value you can also do up and up whatever any of the retail store brands this is what I would recommend if you've never sourced before if you have sourced before I would recommend starting from a good product lead or one that was close that you maybe stumbled across so this is an example here of a product that I stumbled across it was almost good I noticed that the sellers down here was increasing not interested in hopping on that much competition but this makes a nice little starting point for us to go look through the other stores on this listing and see what else they're selling to see if potentially there's some other better products that they might be selling. So what I'm looking for here is over here on the offers tab, I'm just looking for a storefront that has upwards of maybe 200 ratings. So this guy's got 203, 279. So let's look at this guy first, 15 ratings. That means that they are kind of a beginner getting started. They've sold a decent amount of stuff though to get 15 ratings. Your ratings percentage is gonna be very low. I found it to be like almost under one percent of your orders you're going to get a feedback on so that means the seller sold at least 1500 maybe 2000 products so they're you know they're, they're figuring stuff out so that makes this a nice starting point for us to go in and see what else they're selling so what i'm looking for here there's a lot of information to look at here so the first thing to note is that it's going to be filtered by the sales volume right so this is going to be filtered by how fast these items are selling give or take it's not always perfect but for the most part the items at the top of this list are going to be their best selling stuff so that's kind of the best place to start looking for products and then we're going to be looking at a couple things here so we can see on the offers tab how many sellers are on this listing we can also see the buy box and the buy box is so let's for example let's go back to this product you can just press add to cart that means that this is the buy box and so when we look at this this tells me that this product is actually selling for $42 but this specific seller is trying to sell it for $45 so that's just something to keep in mind when we're looking at this max cost box right here because this max cost goes to the storefront so you know just do some mental math here so really we're looking for a price of this item to be about $23 for it to be profitable so all we need to do is scroll through this list basically going to be looking at these products kind of eyeballing it maybe I look at this product it's like 24 capsules of K cups I look at this I'm thinking huh maybe I can buy this for 1136 sure let me go ahead and, and look so then I'll go ahead and press the Google button here and this is going to go ahead and pull up these products on a Google search so it looks like we got it from Walmart for 1398 looks like that might be the decaf one yeah so we're looking for decaf so this is a good start here we can see what's going on here at Bed Bath & Beyond looks like this actually is on sale and plus our are Bed Bath & Beyond 20% off. would recommend getting that membership if you're buying a significant amount of stuff from Bed Bath & Beyond. It usually pays itself off in like the first items you buy. Just kind of a side note there. Looks like it's in stock for regular shipping. It's going to run us about $10.23. So we might have found a good product right off the bat here. I did notice that the buy box is a little bit lower. But now we're going to go ahead and open this up on an Amazon tab to run through our checklist to make sure everything is looking good here. First thing I'm going to look for is just to make sure that the products are the exact same. So I'm looking for 24K cup, decaf. Like you really want to get into the weeds here to make sure you're not buying the wrong thing something I'll even do with especially stuff that's edible like this is I'll see if I can find like a nutrition label maybe even a UPC if you can in this case I can't find either of those things but all those things help you be a little more sure that you actually have the right product on your hands so now I'm gonna go ahead and look at the Keepa graph down here this is not a full guide on Keepa if you need that that video is on my channel as well so the couple things we're looking for here is the sales rank line this green line right here is gonna show us how fast that this item is selling and it looks like this item has a very consistent 
sales pattern. It almost always sells about this fast, but I am noticing down here that there's a lot more new sellers on this listing. So that's another thing to keep in mind. But at the end of the day, I'm looking at this up here. Looks like the buy box, which is where sales are actually happening, is at about $22. So I'm going to go ahead and go to $22. We're buying this for $10.23. So we're going to go ahead and plug in $10.23 over here. And it looks like right away we are close. So if we're taking the, I like to look at the 30 day or even the 90 day average buy box price. In this case, it's all time low, which is almost a good thing because that means that we're not likely to see the price drop a whole lot more. Whereas if you were sourcing it, let's say up here and in the past, it's been down to like, I guess back, I guess back here it was 19 bucks, but you know, you buy it here. Let's say you're buying it on January 6th or 5th or wherever, like right back here. This is what the keeper chart looks like. I would be really scared of this because the price could very easily drop like eight bucks, like seven bucks, whatever that is right there. But in this case, very recently, it looks like this is kind of the recent low almost within the last three months. It hasn't been cheaper. So that's a good sign that this product is a little bit safer for us to go ahead and invest in. But looking at this ROI, it's a little bit low for my tastes. Given the consistency of this item, I might pull the trigger on this one. Actually, the only thing that's scaring me off here is the number of new sellers is rapidly increasing. But when I see that, I like to look and see what the prices were back when there were more sellers. So in this case, I might zoom out to the year right now. There's like 26 sellers on it. Last time there was 19 sellers on it. Last time that happened, the price went to about 20 bucks. So that tells me that this price might drop a couple more dollars. In this case, this one's a very close kind of a borderline product. If you are absolutely flush with cash, it's probably not a bad idea to invest in this product, see how it goes. But I know a lot, especially a lot of you beginners are looking for home run products right off the bat. This is just not a home run product, but we're getting close, right? So the first product we looked at was actually sort of interesting, just not quite there. So I'm going to go ahead and look at a couple more products here. So this one, we're looking for a buy cost of about 23 bucks. I'm not familiar with this brand, this product at all. So we'd have to see where we can find it. I'm seeing it kind of having some trouble finding it if it's even for sale on other websites. So there's this site here. Let's see if you go buy six bottles, it's $42 a bottle. So that's not really what we're looking for. I almost wonder if this is a wholesale product where you could potentially email this brand, call this brand, offer some value for their Amazon business business, the Amazon sales, try to get on this listing as a wholesaler. But I think for an arbitrage basis, that doesn't make a lot of sense for us to try to compete there. This product, after we discount it, because the buy box is 21 or is like 22 bucks, basically, that means we're going to be looking for a buy cost of about nine or 10 bucks, which I just don't think is happening here. Although it is a travel size. So let's just go ahead and click it. So right away, 15 bucks, we'd be looking for a really killer coupon. And I just don't think we're going to find that kind of a coupon here, but you'll develop a feel over time for what a really good product looks like as you scroll through here. So for example, this product, a couple things things I'm seeing here right away is the new FBA price. This orange line right here is staying very stable versus some of these other products where it's kind of, this one's been stable. This one dropped off a little bit. This one's dropping off recently. So that's another thing that I like to look for when I'm doing this sourcing method. So this is not a horrible product to look into. I personally don't really, really want to package 12 packs of things like that, but I imagine if you found this for 75 cents a can or so, it could be a good product. We can go ahead and look just for fun here. So we're doing, we press the Google button. We're going to pull it up here and it looks like it actually is available from Walmart. So in this case, it looks like this particular product is about the price that we would need it to be to actually be decently profitable. looks like we're out of stock right now though. So we'll go ahead and pass on that. Another thing you could look into is to see if there are, you know, other sources that actually have it in stock. I would imagine that some sites might be selling this. So here's like a 24 pack. You might be able to buy those and then multi-pack them together yourself. But there's, you know, in my opinion, there's easier products out there. This product would be something, especially for that Walmart listing where it was just the one can at a time. You could add that to a spreadsheet of products that were out of stock when you check them. And then maybe once a week, you go back, check that spreadsheet, look at things that are now in stock that you can go ahead and buy. These sandals are decreasing in price. Don't like the looks of that. This could be interesting. So we're looking for about a $20 price point on this one. Go ahead and press the Google button here. It looks like we might be finding it. I think this is 120 count and I think this was 180. So again, not quite there. This is the iHerb listing for it though. Looks like it is 26 bucks, but with iHerb, you can sign up for their email list. And once you do that, you can get a 20 percent off coupon. I think it is it's either 25 or 30 percent. So if you've never bought any products from iHerb, I think this product right here would be a good product for you to go ahead and pull the trigger on after that 25 percent off. Let's go ahead and see here. So as I click into the Amazon listing here, I do actually notice that IP alert is flagging this brand. You can see this little siren here. That means that people who have sold this product in the past or this particular brand in the past have had IP complaints from the brand for selling this product. This IP alert is just a very simple little Chrome extension. I think there should be a coupon code down below to get you 30 bucks off. But this has been a major tool to help my business be safe when I'm buying products that the brand might complain against my account, cause some troubles there. I've actually only had two IP complaints in the last year because of using tools like this. So right away, this product looks like it was going to be good. There actually are quite a few sellers on here for a product that would have IP issues. So maybe it's different now. I'm not going to
not going to take the risk, but potentially this could be a decent product. But using IP alert here saved me from having a potential headache getting an IP complaint. So we're going to go ahead and keep hunting here. So I'm going to keep scrolling through this storefront and I'll try to find something just to give you guys a good example. So you know that this method actually works. After all, I am just a guy on the internet. So let me find something that's good and we'll get back to you. All right. So I am back. I found a profitable product. You can tell I'm wearing different clothes. I found a good product or so I thought it was a good product and it ended up being a bit of a mismatch. So for the sake of making these videos really good, I came back next day. I'm going to go ahead and show you a different item that I found using the same exact method. I just ended up looking at a different storefront here. So I ended up finding this product right here. It's a two pack of these little flossers. So let me show you what specifically I was looking for to know that this is a good product. So I was looking down here on the Keepa chart. So what I'm paying attention to here is the buy box line. You can see how the price is kind of weird. It does some weird action here where it goes down and back up. But for the most part, it hangs out at this 1550 price point. So what's happening here is some sellers are coming into stock at 1275. It looks like in this case, it's occasionally rotating to a merchant seller, but for the most part, it's giving it to the FBA sellers. Maybe this is caused by stock issues. I'm not really sure what could be going on here, but we're the FBA sellers here. So we're going to be selling this item for 1550. These little fluctuations are not horrible for us. Uh, we're still going to be able to sell probably just as much. So we're going to go ahead and plug in 1550 as our sale price here. And then over on Amazon, I found this product listed for $2.78. So altogether, we're paying like $5.50 for this product for a two pack of them. And something of note here is that this product is a 90 count, same exact thing, fruit flavored, fun flossers, whatever, same exact thing, except this is a 75 count. So I was curious if that might make this a mismatch when even if it is the same exact product, you want to make sure you're delivering the same exact product to the customer, even if it is a different count. In this case, I don't think any customer is going to be upset about it being more units. And so to really be sure that this is the same product here, I went ahead and saw that the UPC is actually in a picture on this listing. And then over here on Walmart, the same exact thing is going on. We've got the UPC in the picture. It's the same exact UPCs, but it looks like this picture in the Walmart listing is just like 90 count. Like, you know, the ones you see at the store where it says like 10% more free. It's probably the same exact thing going on here. So same exact product, same UPC, not worried about it being a product mismatch. So once we do that, we plug all this information in. Looks like this product is selling 119 times a month. So from here, we would just figure out how many other sellers are on this listing that we're going to be competing with. In this case, it looks like the FBA offers go off of seller up here. So I'm going to pull up the actual Amazon tab, see how many competitive sellers we have. So basically that's going to be FBA sellers who are within a couple percentage points of that buy box price. So here's one who's shipped by Amazon. So we got one, we got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine competitive sellers. So you'd be the 10th competitive seller on this listing, opening back up to seller up here. That means you would be very easily able to capture 12 sales a month on this product at $15.50. So you're going to be making, you know, you're not making a million bucks on this product by any means, but right here, this product's going to make you 40 to $50 a month. You know, you find five, 10, 20, a hundred products just like this one that are generating, you know, 50 to hundred bucks a month that can add up to some pretty significant income. So just to prove that this model really does work, there's an example of a good product that I found doing this exact method. Now we'll cut back to pass me to end the video. So I hope you guys found a ton of value in this video. If you did, please feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. That adds value to my business. If you have any questions or comments, anything like that, feel free to drop those down in the comments below. I'm happy to answer those questions, but I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.